we get a lot of questions about what the differences are between a Superbird and a Daytona, and I thought what we'd do is we brought two of ours out of here, a 1970 Limelight Green Superbird and a 1969 uh, Charger Daytona, that's a Y2 yellow. This Superbird is a two owner, I'm the second owner, it's a 440, four barrel, four speed bench seat. It is all numbers matching, original engine transmission and everything. The Daytona is a 440, four barrel, four speed buckets with console. It's also all numbers matching, original engine, etc. On the Daytona, it is uh, all original body panels. On this one, we did have to, because of the rust, replace, replace some of the body panels. Let's start at the nose cone. On a Superbird, you'll notice that it has a grill down underneath the leading edge of the uh, front nose spoiler. Uh, it is body color painted and you can see it's pretty wide grill. It's about four feet wide. Now let's go over here to the Daytona and let's look at the difference in the grill there. On the Daytona, the grill is actually on the leading edge of the spoiler. It is still body color. I'm going to address that in a minute. And it's a much smaller grill with uh, smaller indentations. Does one of them cool better than the other? Neither of these cars do well sitting in traffic stops. On the Daytona, I have had uh, uh, Glen Ray put in a triple core radiator, and it seems to have addressed most of our issues. On the Superbird, uh, both of these cars run a little hot in uh, hot weather when you stop, but if I was to guess, I do believe the Superbird cools a little better than the other. Now, I do want to mention one other thing. On the Daytona, it is a body color grill. On the Orange Hemi Daytona that we've been working on, uh, you may have noticed that that grill is a flat black. I've talked to the two previous owners, remember I'm the third owner on that, and neither of them remember painting it, and the flat black grill on the orange car actually still has some orange overspray, so it's a question that will never be answered. We actually think maybe way back in the distant past that they painted that one from Creative Industries when they bought them. Now let's go down the sides here. As we move to the sides, let's stop at the nose, uh, I'm sorry, at the fender scoops. The scoops are a little bit different, kind of hard to tell, but they are a little different. But I think what we really ought to address is uh, start at the front edge of the hood. On the Daytona, here's something few people catch, but you know, we nutcases do. Uh, the Daytona, the uh, hood pins and lanyards screwed to the top of the lanyard fitting where on the superbird they screw underneath to actually one of the uh, uh, cowl elements of the superbird underneath the hood so slight difference but something to notice i put little rubber things on here this is my kind of my show car uh, i do drive them all occasionally but this one is uh, this one has just completed restoration. I try to do all of my uh, mechanical and electronically between me and my friends. We do everything here in the shop, but I don't do body, I don't do paint, and for that I sent it up to uh, Mark at Magnum Restoration up in LaSalle, Illinois. Now let's go to the back of the fender scoops and let me show you something there. On the fender scoops on a Superbird, they are decorative. There's no holes under here. Uh, there's a lot of supposition. Are they for tire clearance? Are they for airflow? It, we have actually even talked to uh, a couple of the Chrysler engineers. No one will actually say, but the argument is that these help airflow. They really don't have anything to do with tire clearance. I know, you know, you want to argue about it. Folks, I own these. It's got nothing to do with car tire clearance. It has everything to do with airflow and frankly, I think with styling. Now, if you look at the, the uh, fender scoops on a Daytona, if you get around here to the back, they actually have punched holes in the top of the fender if you can get underneath there. And you can see these are actually functional on a Daytona. And um, whether they really work or not, I'm not the guy to answer that question. I never drove them 200 miles an hour to actually answer that question. I will tell you on either the Superbird or the Daytona, you get about 80 miles an hour and start increasing. You literally can feel the car start to squat as speed goes up with the downforce. Okay, let's move to the A-pillar wind deflectors. These are stainless steel, and although they look the same, on a Daytona, 
they're actually uh, affixed to the A pillar <laughs> with a black rubber adhesive. It's kind of messy. You can touch it. It actually feels just a touch soft. There's no screws. They are literally black rubber underneath. Now let me show you that versus the one on the Superbird. On the Superbird, they are screwed on from the factory. There is a slight indentation where the screws are, and I'll occasionally have somebody say, oh, they messed up those stainless steel fittings when they put them on. The answer is no, they didn't. These were a slight indentation put in when Creative Industries screwed these into the uh, A pillar itself to hold them, so they are supposed to have a little indentation. <coughs> Let's move to the interior. On the interior of a Superbird or a Daytona, very similar. They're, bo <coughs> they're both B-body cars, same basic style, same basic everything. There are a few differences that you'll note if you're really into these cars. First, on the radio, the radio on a 69 Dodge Charger or Charger Daytona is a thumb wheel that goes up and down. On a 70 Superbird, that radio is actually a round knob that turns right and left, a more conventional style. Both of these cars are four-speed factory cars. On the Daytona in 69, they use a round ball on top of the steering assembly. I'm sorry, on top of the shifter assembly. Um, and on a Superbird in 70, they went to the pistol grip shifter, which this Superbird has, that original pistol grip shifter. Again, you know, people look for the pistol grip. They, they weren't in 69, they were in 1970. Now let's move a little further back to the uh, gas tanks. Most people know that the Dodge Charger, of course, had the racing style uh, gas tank filler assembly at the top. Uh, the Superbird was behind the license plate, a horrible place to mount it, by the way. I had to put gas in this green one last night and, and it's very difficult. Now, here is the big question. We're going to move to the angle, a straight on angle of the wings so you can see what's going on on the angle of these wings, the wing height, and, and the degree of angle. Let's talk about the uh, rear spoiler angle. When you've got the car side by side, remember this is a Superbird, the green one is a Superbird, the yellow is a Daytona. What you notice is the Daytona wing angle is much more severe than on the Superbird. Now one of the things that we learned was that the stylus got a hold of the Superbird and made some modifications. I don't know if they changed the uh, wing angle, but it's, it's very evident in looking from this direction that the Superbirds is much more angled back than the more straight up one on the Daytona. An obscure little fact, if you read, there's a guy named Paul Hurd that has a real good book on Superbirds and uh, Daytonas and restoring them. And one of the things that he said is the wind tunnel testing on the Daytona, the Daytona was actually two or three miles an hour faster than the Superbird. I gotta believe some of that is attributable to the stylus changing the wing here because on the Daytona, they let the wind tunnel design the car. On the Superbird, they made some changes based on stylus announcement. Let's move to the back of the car. On the back of the Superbird, the first thing you're going to notice is the Superbirds all have vinyl tops. All of them have vinyl tops. I'll explain that in a minute. The Daytonas, none of them have vinyl tops. The rear window is not interchangeable. There is a different style. This one is a flat style. The guys that make the clones are uh, using a Vega rear window, an old Chevy Vega rear window, because it's fairly close, uh, but it, it's not exact, but it's close enough. When you're making a clone, it's hard to tell the difference. Where on the uh, Superbird, they didn't do that. Now, on the Superbird, let's talk about a couple of other unusual features. On the Superbird, as I said, you have a vinyl top. Now, why did they do the vinyl top? Well, the Superbird, they wanted it aerodynamic, but they had to do it real quickly. So. What they did, they sent it to uh, Creative Industries. They took out the uh, sail pins, put in the flat top, and then stuck in a plug. And rather, rather than cleaning up all the welding and everything else, they threw a vinyl top on top, and they threw on these corners, these little diamonds, they call them on the corners, to hide, uh, hide the weld and the poor fitting on those, those individual devices. 
um, when the plug is out, you can see quite evidently, it goes right here, there's a little, a little angle declination, whatever you want to call it, from the roof back. That's where the plug is on the super. Let's move over to the Daytona and look at the back of the Daytona. On the Daytona, they did a much cleaner job. Again, if you know your normal charger, they have what's called a sail panel, and the back window is angled. So on the Daytona, they also took a plug. I'll show you a plug here in just a minute. I have one in the shop. Uh, they took a, a steel plug, welded it in here, but they must have done a little bit better job. Remember, they only made 500 of these versus 1,900 of the Superbirds. Different window, they plugged them in. Some of the hardest stuff to get a hold of is some of the various unusual moldings of these cars. Let's move to the very back of the car and point out one or two things there. The Superbird, of course, is built on the frame of a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. The rear end is all Plymouth Roadrunner. You'll note that everything back here is interchangeable with the Roadrunner. No unusual pieces, no nothing back here. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, on the Superbird, some of them had chrome tips. This one did. Some of them have a turn down. Uh, for example, a California car was not allowed to have a chrome tip. It had to have a turn down. And uh, the, actually, the chrome tips were a slightly additional option, if I remember, eight or ten or twelve bucks, uh, as far as that goes. Now, this one, uh, this one was delivered. We'll have a story about this one in the future. This was sold brand new by Vernon M. Ball Inc. in Elkhart, Indiana. And as I said, I'm the second owner of it, and uh, we'll be talking about that in a future video. What we're going to do, we're going to do individual two or three part videos on each of the cars here in the shop. Let's move over to the Daytona. On the Daytona, of course, the Daytona is a 69 Charger RT modified for the Daytona. So the Daytona uses a standard Charger rear end. It doesn't use a standard Charger trunk lid, but it does use a standard Charger rear end. Uh, again, this one has the chrome tips. I believe they all did. Don't eat me up on that, but I believe they all did have the chrome tips. Okay, the last little bit I wanted to talk about here, a couple of uh, things that most people know. There is an Allen head adjustment to this rear wing in both the Daytona and the Superbird. Uh, I have had people sitting on the wings. Uh, nobody as heavy as me, but I have had people sitting on the wings, and uh, particularly grandchildren and, and uh, pretty girls. You know, that's the way it is. Um, as far as the rear of the car, I think I've done everything I wanted here. Uh, that's great on the Daytona. Let me do one more thing. Let me open the trunk and show you a couple of differences. Daytona versus Superbird. In the Superbird, you're gonna notice there's some special things about jacks. There is a conventional rear bumper jack mounted under the, the spare tire in the back. And then these all have a special nose jack. In a Superbird, they are black. They have a unique kind of pie wedge shape tie down. Um, they are notoriously unsteady. And the other thing I'll show you is that Superbirds and Daytonas both have a wing support in the back of them. Let's go over here to the Daytona. In the Superbird, the jack is mounted on the passenger side. In the Daytona, it's on the driver's side. Similarly, there are two jacks. There's a rear bumper jack. Uh, it is not mounted under the spare. It's mounted over on the left side. There's a front nose jack which is red and it has its own unique tie down. They uh, are very similar as far as looks. They're impossible to get. Uh, very difficult, very expensive. There are some knockoffs. I'm lucky on both of these cars. These are the original jacks, but that's by luck as much as anything else. I think as far as the exterior of the cars go, that'll take care of us here today. And uh, let's lead into a shot of the orange Hemi Daytona being driven for the first time. 